welcome everyone that is here in the place as well. It's really good return for this crazy two years of lockdown and finally be able to see people face to face in the security conference around the world. It's really good. Um, so basic question from the lockdown time. Are you guys able to hear me in online? So please provide me a feedback if, if everything is okay. So um, my name is uh, Henner Roberto, right? Um, I have 15 um, years with experience based with penetration testing. I uh, have worked with consultant for many, many years, right? I am in the conference for developers. So I am not a developer, so sorry for, for that. But I am. Uh, I would like to share some experience uh, from nice stuff that you guys, as developers, you, you guys can implement in the process uh, to deliver better quality in the final products that you you guys are delivering, right? And part of this is the um, automation of from some parts that uh, can be done in the pen tests, right? Um, so um, I will start here i have my um one small agenda about this uh this topic so yeah a little bit about uh, myself here um as i mentioned uh, uh i have the chance to speak in some security conference um uh, around the road right um have also the chance to work with some specific um companies and have also the chance to see a lot of uh, uh, conferences like um, Hackers to Hackers, Alligator, OWASP, Besides and, uh, and others, but come on, it's definitely not important. Let's go for what matter, right? So our agenda, basically, I will speak a little bit about um, what you guys can automate during the penetration testing, right? Uh, I will suggest some tools um, to do that automation, um, like present my personal workflow, how I am implementing this, how I am doing this, um, while um, delivering this kind of stuff. Um, I am responsible for doing red team campaigns and um, here in EBB. So I will explain you a little bit of this mindset, how we can introduce this mindset of red team in the automation in order to have better results, in order to aim at the focus about what you, you really need to check and what you really need to exploit and also if we have time um, automate automation regarding the reports as well um okay so what we can automate and what it's you definitely should not automate during the penetration test right so penetration test uh, the first phase of uh, our common phase in the penetration test you needed to gain information so all the gaining information process you can automate and without problem but you definitely should not automate the exploitation, right? Because if you try to automate the exploitation, for sure, you're going to land in the denial of service. You started to broke stuff, uh, servers will stop, and it's definitely not a recommendation. So um, open source intelligence, it's totally fine to, to um, automate enumeration. Uh, and for the privilege escalation, we have one part inside of the privilege escalation, which is the uh, uh, enumeration. I mean, which kind of configurations we can um, do exploit or misconfigurations we can exploit uh, while doing the, the privilege escalation. This part of enumeration is okay, but definitely nothing related with exploitation, okay? So let's speak about some tools, right? And this first part is quickly, is just um, recommendation of, of some tools. Um, from OSINT, um, I, I will try to be more focused in open source tools, right? Because uh, you guys will be able to use that in the, the companies without problems, right? So uh, we have spider food, um, even Shodan, you have a limited um, a license that you can use um, to do that. Of course, Shodan, you have one paid license that will be better to grab information about the targets, right? Uh, port scans tools uh, to detect which kind of ports your server is running, um, what it's exposed. So any map and mass scan. Uh, mass scan is really good to cover a lot of uh, range when we have uh, um, too much, too many machines that we need to cover. So mass scan is really good. 
And then we have another category, which is the network and uh, scans and our host enumeration, which is basically when we land in the network, sometimes we need to um, enumerate how many device we have alive on that network. So any map, once again, can help you with this mission to enumerate and see how many uh, uh, machines we have on that network, Mesoscan, once again. And then we have really good tools. Um, uh, Greenbone, um, previously it was uh, known as OpenVAS. We have Nessus, but Nessus is a paid. Uh, Qualys, also uh, a paid solution, right? And we have very basic stuff that is very simple to automate the analysis, like SSL, uh, checking the, the, the quality of the SSL certification, uh, certificate SSL, uh, and so on. So I even Burp Suite has one um, specific plugin for that. And we have some protocols. Uh, SNMP, SNMP protocol, for example, it's very common in the network, right? So we have some, some tools like Patato, SNMP check, SNMP Bulwark, uh, even MetaExploit has a lot of, uh, um, uh, of tools for this uh, purpose, right? Um, so let me just update the laser here to make it easy. Um, some other protocols, because nowadays we are dealing a lot with web, right? But we still have in, uh, companies that are running on-premises um, stuff. And sometimes we, we land in a, a network that we still have in on-prem. So RPC protocol is a very common protocol for Microsoft solutions. So um, we have some tools that are easy to, to be um, automated. And we have for uh, Impact Python library, which is a really good library. Uh, we provide to them. And uh, for SMB, um, some, some companies you are able to hack the entire company only looking for SMB shares. Uh, it's amazing how uh, some companies are um, not able to um, protect the basic for SMB. Uh, sometimes one dev would like to share something with another dev and they put this in an open share uh, folder in, the, in his machine. So just share the... the the, the folder and maybe forgot it's supposed to be temporary folder or someone and this kind of stuff the the guys that are inside the company to hack the company or doing penetration tests can use this and automate this kind of analysis very easy as well so we have SN, uh, nmap and nsa scripts uh smb client SM, smb map some samples of tools that are simple to implement some protocols, um, remote protocols, we, we are that we are dev. Usually, we use SSH, for example, to connect on the on the servers and ultimately start something, run, uh, deploy something, and so on. So SSH, we have some uh, brute force uh, for that, very easy to do as well. And for HTTP, HTTPS protocol, we have a lots of tools. Okay, so let me just jump for something more interesting, right? when you started to put all this thing together to automate, right? So I am not a dev, <laughs> so, but I create my very simple and small um, algorithm to automate my daily tasks activities in terms of penetration test. When we are speaking about automation, uh, the first thing that we must be careful is don't create denial of service, right? So you should limit the amount of scans you are running against your server. Because it's very simple. When, when you started to detect this stuff, it started to call the other tools. We, you will have a lot of uh, uh, scans, a lot of tasks to run. And these tasks, if you started to run these at the same time, of course, you will create on denial of service in the target machine and also in your uh, own machine, right? So it's good you create priorities, right? Because some protocols or some kind of uh, tools, uh, you should to create one high uh, uh, priority list uh, for this, right? And then you start to separate, segregate what you should to uh, evaluate first. In this case here, I took one screenshot from that when I was running uh, one scan for one, uh, I was doing a, a MBA course in this course, I, I have some CTF challenge where I needed to hack some machines. So I took some samples here and I used this, uh, uh, this algorithm on this um, CTF to deliver me um, the, the reports and 
report the vulnerabilities and so on. Here we have a general uh, workflow, right? And how these tools are integrated with each other, right? So it doesn't matter, you have a lot of tools if you are not able to orchestrate this tool and use this tool with the correct purpose, right? When you are doing um, something automated. So this is a general a vision of the uh, uh, of the the workflow, and I started creating this as a small script. So this was my original project <laughs> when I started to write that. So small scripts to automate some parts. So for example, I want to automate the uh, port enumeration. I want to automate the part of web scans to check how many vulnerabilities uh, I have and so on and so on. This kind of stuff could be implemented for anything else, even for uh, uh, code review analysis. If you have one, one tool which has one API, you can use that. So let's go into details here about this uh, 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 workflow automation, right? So when the process starts, usually Considering that I just land in one network, I have no idea how many machines I have on this network. So the first step is enumerate how many machines I have, how many machines I needed to attack, and try to become administrator inside this network, right? So you will start with basically host discovery uh, techniques, right? So you can send a, a, a ping, this is the basic way to, to detect how many machines we have alive inside the network. But nowadays, firewalls are blocking ICMP package by default, right? So ping package by default is going to be blocked. So what we can do, we can use a, a simple NMAP scene scan, and this scan you will check and try to connect from specific ports, like common service ports, right? Uh, uh, we have, I have one suggestion for ports, so I will try to uh, speed up here, and then we go for the details uh, to to when when we have more time, okay? So once you detect it and you discover the live uh, host, you have, uh, 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 I, at least myself, I'm using two approaches, right? One, one uh, and live. So for example, sometimes we, we land in one, one network, we have 2,000 machines inside this network, inside this, this domain, right, to, to evaluate. Uh, okay, what I should do first, what we, how I will you priori prioritize, how many machines of these machines are we really scan? Considering that when we are doing a penetration test project, we have a very limited time, maybe one week to cover as much you can, hack as much you can, and deliver your report in the end of <laughs> in the end of the day. For this reason, we need automation, right? So. Speaking about uh, um, any map, I have one um, very simple sample here. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Let me just. This is a very simple uh, sample, right? So here in any map, you have this. Let me just zoom in, okay? So what are these port numbers? So here I started to define with how many ports I would like to evaluate, right? And how I select this port and why I am doing like that, right? Because any map, you can simple uh, um, use one tag like minus P dash and any map will cover all 65,000 ports of the TCP protocol. However, it could take two days only to run a port scan for one single machine depending on the network. And also it will create too much noise that most probably the blue team will detect you, block you, and you will not be able to deliver nothing, right? So how I land with these port numbers, how I took these port numbers and why I am defining these port numbers, what I did was very simple. I go for exploit database, Right, which is a website where it usually has a lot of a collection from exploits, very uh, normal in the security industry. I also go for Mitri, right, for, for CVEs and so on, extract out the ports that were related inside the source code. So I go for the source code for every single exploit and extract the ports that were there. I did the same for Met exploits. So then I compile all the sport in this list. Okay. And why I did that? I don't need to check 65,000 ports. I needed to check ports that most probably have vulnerabilities related with that product, 
running behind of that port, right? Because usually people don't change the default ports. So this is my first advice, change the default ports if possible, right? For some stuff, of course, we cannot change. For web servers, for example, you need 443, we need 80 sometimes, you know? But these ports are my focus to, to, to bring that, and for this reason I am um, commenting up about that. So, returning to this, of course, after that, if I have time, I will also check the, all the other ports. And any map will give you uh, one um, report, right? And this report could be easily automated about uh, what you will do next with the information that you came here. Here is a simple sample of any map report, right? It's showing which port it's open and so on. So any map has uh, a lot of scripts that could help you to identify the um, the vulnerabilities, right? So here it's a very simple sample about that. Uh, so for example, this model here from any map it's looking for uh, comments inside the uh, uh, inside the source code. It's very common actually we find comments inside the source code that could uh, help us to exploit something. Okay, so Based on, on this, uh, basically parsing this result, right? Parsing this result, we can define what we will do later, right? So basically filter what is networking protocols running and what is web protocol running, right? And down here, we have some samples of uh, the stuff that I started to automate on that time. SNMP, brute force, RPC, protocol. These are kind of protocols that usually people that are dev, they don't really understand how these protocols are working. But I can tell you, these protocols, if they are open, they could leak a lot of information for who is attacking, right? Um, and SMB, very three basic protocols that most, prob most probably remain open because by default, people don't pay attention to these protocols. And we have a lot of uh, actions that can be done uh, against that. Let's speak a little bit about web, right? Which maybe is the part that is more, more familiar with the majority of the people. Um, some analysis in web, uh, at least run something, right? Run some scan against your own website or against your own app application to see how many vulnerabilities you have on that before you deliver. It could give you good insights about uh, Securities in terms of that. So basically, uh, a part of that, I apply one spidering. Uh, spidering, you also call it crawling. It's a process for navigate for every single link we have in the application, right? Because it starts to map in the application, it starts to create one map about that. So spidering is, is, is that process, right? So then we start to uh, run the tools, right? Sample of tools, Burp Suite. Burp Suite is lead in the market nowadays, one of the leads of the market nowadays from vulnerability analysis and vulnerability scans. The result for Burp Suite scan is really good. Uh, of course, Burp Suite is a paid license, but it has one API, and you can uh, use this API to run the scans, receive the, the result. CMSIC, it's one tool to, that will help uh, the you like consider that you are a pen tester, right? Uh, or something like that. It will help identify vulnerabilities for CMS because nowadays companies are using a lot of CMS and this process of automation will help you. For example, WordPress, we have one specific uh, 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 WordPress tool inside Kali Linux, which could help you to identify a lot of vulnerabilities in WordPress. So all these other tools here are very, these uh, Wapichis are open source, Arakins are open source. And we have some process of fuzzing uh, in, the, in the HTTP protocol uh, to identify sensitive files. I have some samples of that here in this, this presentation. Um, Eyewitness is a very interesting uh, uh, tool because it's automation of a screenshot. And then we say, why I will like to automate the screenshots from the website? Because consider that you have, for example, you map the network and you have 3,000 uh, uh, websites to evaluate or 3,000 URLs to evaluate. When you automate the process of the screenshot, you can quickly see small pictures about what is running on that. 
And for example, only using this process, sometimes the developers receive one server to do the job. But for example, directory listing was for some reason that I still not understand it. Sometimes the people enable directory listing. It means that everything inside that uh, uh, folder will be exposed, right? So when you start uh, uh, automating the process of a screenshot, you can quickly see and quickly see maybe, hey, this is a form. So I should focus more effort to try to hack this form, like a login page or something like that. That's more, most probability to have common vulnerabilities, like, for example, SQL injection. Okay. Um, Tesseract, I, am, I will speak specific about that uh, because it's uh, what I, I, else I am doing with uh, screenshot. Another tool that I would like to suggest is Nuckly. Um, we have a lot of vulnerabilities that was very famous, right? Spring for Shell, Shell Shock, Lock for J, and so on, so on. All of this, we have CVEs for that, right? So Nuckly has a database which all of these CVEs, and you can run and quickly receive the result and check if your application or your server is vulnerable for any of that CVs. So quickly you can identify what you are vulnerable with that. What I did was, okay, I found the CVE, so I searched for exploits related with that CVs. Because remember, we still have in Mitri, we still have in MetaExploit, we still have in ExploitDB. So just deliver to me. This is the CVE. Okay, here is the vulnerability, and this is exploit. I just take the exploit and get inside. So uh, this was the general overview about that. So how we can apply the red team mindset on this automated process when we we do this level of automation, right? So I was, I mean, due to the limitations here, I was not able to run everything automatically because I would like to do this live for you. But we have some uh, limitations here. So I decided to take the screenshots and put this and explain what's going on, OK? So this is the basic uh, uh, sample, right? Um, this was a, a CTF, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> it's real. Uh, uh, products, real scenarios, but in the in in the CTF, so it's a controlled way, right? So here we have one login page, right? Very simple login page. What is the problem here? When you put the name of your product in this, like in the in the in the bottle, we have, and we have uh, eyes of network. So we have this here, and this here. It's easy for who is attacking. Go for this database and searching for vulnerability it's related with that <clears throat> the, the process and usually what we start we start with the uh, enumeration of which how many ports we have open for that right okay so basically this is up uh, the report for uh, nmap do you remember that we have in inside nmap some scripts to detect comments so here we can see the comment that was inserted inside of that, which is also leaking the version. This is a gold mine for who is attacking you. Don't include version inside the comments and avoid include version inside anything that could be exposed. So what I did, basically, based on the open ports, so I have these ports open, right, in the map. So what is the mindset? I go, sometimes we could detect some ports that are not common ports, right? In this case, for example, I am using a, a not good sample here because it's 3306. We know by experience when who is developing know that MySQL is, is running on that, right? So basically every time I, I take one port that are not 80443, I go to this database, research how many exploits that we have and create this list. So this is an automated list that my, my algorithm is given to me. Then I will have every single exploit related with that port. Why? Because sometimes people are trying to protect themselves. They, the port is open, but we don't have banners. We don't have version exposed, but the port is still there. If it's a default port, I still being able to detect what is the product, right? So in the... Uh, um, Right side here, we have uh, some ports that are related with this uh, with this detail, right? Some uh, 
this port here in this case is 5,000, so I have no idea what, what is, could be running behind a 5,000 port. So then, now I have an idea. Which kind of products usually use this port and how many of them we have vulnerabilities, right? So when quickly can, can identify with this um, approach. How it happens if I supposed to do it manually? Right, I supposed to take this information, go for exploit database. This is the website, search for this product, and then I will have the list. Right, so this process was automated. Right, I have this list of everything related with that software. Sometimes we don't have this inside the source code, inside comments, or something like that. So then we needed to use a different approach. You remember, I automated the process of screenshots, right? So here we have all the screenshots in the bottom here, all the screenshots that was taken by the application, by the form of the application, all the screenshots. And then I have two tools on that list that I presented you before, which is Eye of Witness, use it to take a screenshot, and Tesseract. Tesseract basically will apply OCR in, uh, 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 in the image of the screenshot image, then I can extract from this image every single word I have. Because these eyes of network we have in the, in the top here, of, in this part here, this is an image, it's not a text. So I supposed to not detect this product by evaluating the source code because it's an image, right? It's not right in there, but it's in the image. So I take a screenshot, convert this in OCR, and now I have the name of the product as the same way. Uh, based on that, I will extract every single uh, word from this image. And now let's research again. Let's see how many exploits we have again about that, right? So here we see, of course, every, everything will bring you false positives. And here we have a good sample of false positives. Because I was checking for the word eyes, and it came with me with one product called Web Eyes Guest Book. It's not this case, right? But here we have Eyes of Network is exactly the same product which was exposed there. So now I know exactly how many vulnerabilities or how many possible exploits we have for this product, right? Just one simple stuff. What, what you do? You just put the name of the product in an index page and it could be used for who is attacking to detect vulnerabilities against that. The same happened when we are using a library. If you are using one library in your code, even a stupid JavaScript library, if this library are not receiving updates anymore, your code will irritate this, this vulnerability, right? We have, for example, Black Duck, which is one tool that could be used to automate this process, which will evaluate how many commits this library is using. It's still uh, uh, um, under development or not. So there's a lot of stuff that could be automated in, in, this, in this process, okay? So, uh, Castro, does we have any, any question online or something, okay? So guys, is it okay? I mean, it's fine to, it's very simple, the process, right? So it's automation, it's, okay? So uh, another sample here, uh, but in this time, uh, this word, eyes of net network was uh, extracted from, from this, and the same scenario here, but this time more accurate, right? So very simple sample about that. And I am telling you one history about how we hack this machine, right? This machine. This is machine that we are hacking. And I will show you the process of hacking this machine step by step. Okay? So it was a simple product, right? We found uh, in very quickly we found possible exploits for that. And all the exploits here, if we read, we need one gradation, right? Are exploits that are affecting that product, but only if you are authenticated. So at this point, it means nothing because we don't have credentials on that, right? Okay, so another port that was open in this case was the port 5000. Okay, so let's do the basically analysis on that. And this led me to the web fuzzing, right? What is the process of web fuzzing? Web fuzzing basically 
or brute force for sensitive files, right? So we can use a word list. We have a word list available on the internet, right? This is what the attackers will do. They will take this word list and use this word list and looking for these possible sensitive files inside your server. If they found something and how it works, because the HTTP protocol, if you request some file, if this file exists, it will return HTTP 200 for you, right? If it don't exist, maybe 404 or something like that. If it's access is necessary, 401. So this is the base from HTTP protocol, right? So using this behavior of the HTTP protocol, it's possible to find sensitive files inside your server, right? Like, for example, backup of the API, when the guys did one backup from the API. If this backup remains in the same server, yes, they can easily find that with this process. However, this is one step behind I execute the process by itself. What I do is map what is the behavior of the web server. Right? How I do that? With WFUS, you can, I started to sending, looks like that I am sending trash, correct? But there is a logic here in this trash. It will be random text, of course. But look, here I am checking what is the behavior when I try to access some PHP file. Most probably, this PHP file don't exist. But I am looking for what would be the behavior of the, the server, right? So. And then I evaluate how many words it returning in the sample, in the HTTP body, right? How many words I have there? How many lines? So what is the behavior of the server? So for example, every time I send something like that, I have 51 uh, uh, words on that. Files that don't exist, 31. So after map, and I also will try to put something like, for example, let's put some words inside of that put logo on page, uh, admin, something in the middle, and see what is the behavior of that. And why I do that? To avoid false positives. Because the server could be configured by the administrators or by the developer team to always give you uh, like fake response. Right? If it are programmed to provide fake response in the HTTP protocol, or for example, they have one WAF protecting, this WAF will always give you. So by mapping the behavior before I do this, I can really mapping what I am doing. So then I will run again the WFUS to enumerate that. But this time I am mapping and putting here what it, they supposed to hide. Hide all these words. I mean, every single time I have one answer that have this number of words, hide this because it's a false positive for me then I have exactly precise result here. No false positives. In this scenario, remember, we are speaking about the CTA. F exercise here, here in ABB, so for this F sample here. So I have two uh, files, user.txt and one file called secreto because it's a Portuguese CTF, by the way. And for this reason, we have its basic secret. Then the parts that you cannot automate it, which is the hands-on, right? Some parts from penetration tests, it could be automated. Until this point, everything was automated. Now we needed to do the manual job, right? So I needed to evaluate this secret of file. So basically, let's try to access this. Very simple stuff. Um, OK, it's uh, something to be downloaded. Downloaded and I have a weird, um, a weird text inside of that. Secret was a zip file, but at this moment I have no clue about that, right? Uh, uh, this file was a, a, a zip file, and here I was trying to identify. I have this on Maskit uh, online tool. It's a really good tool. Every time we receive some, because nowadays the guys are trying to encode and encrypt as well the malicious code, right? So this website help you to decrypt that. So I was just checking, oh, let me see what we have here. Nothing in this case. So let's move on because I was not able to receive nothing here. So I was checking this file in the details. So here on the, the right side, we have the, uh, um, the details. 
And on the left side, I put one magic, uh, um, a magic uh, number tables, right? Because every single file, the first two bytes of this file will tell which kind of file is, is that. And I evaluated that this file, it was, has a break of line. So I put all together and tried to decrypt that using base64. For my surprise, yes, it was a base64. And you guys can see this on this part over here, right? So base64, and I can see credits.txt and something else. So for me, when I look for that, by the experience, I know this is a zip file because of the magic file number, which is pk, right? So if I do one, uh, basically, uh, x evaluation of this file, I can see this uh, pk file. And I just put side by side here how I got the conclusion that I was speaking about a zip file here. And actually, what happened in the context of this, the guys put one backup inside of that, and they try to use one name that was not common and remove the extension for this file to not be easy to detect this file there and leave the backup inside of that. And okay, now I find this and let's see what we were able to do with this file. When I try to open the file because I see creds inside that, okay, let me check what which kind of credentials, maybe someone saved this file. And surprise, surprise, this zip file was protected right all of this is hands-on what we i did before was automated now it's hands-on okay and okay it's a normal zip file protected so what i did i automated the process of brute force of this zip file because let's use automation as much we can right so then here is the kind of the simple script uh, uh code that i used to um uh, brute force that I'm using John the Reaper uh, to, John the Reaper is a really good tool to create modification in word lists, right? So we have a word list and we try to use this word list more kind of uh, um, human password. So John the Reaper can do that, right? So I use Hockey, which is a really good word list, by the way. And then uh, I use 7-zip to test the password, right? So try to, zip that with this stuff. Cassio, we have questions? Mm -hmm. It's taken care by automation, right? But the, 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 I just create a simple script for, for WFUS to hide this uh, false positive stuff. So yes, this is a uh, uh, provided automated by for the tool. Everything I showed before, it's automated, and now I am showing what I mean. Everything, every time that I have something automated, I will put in the top automated. When we have something that is hands-on, you you guys will see in the uh, top uh, of this slide like hands-on, right? So this part was automated, and I found the password for the zip file because it was a weak password file. Right, it was in a, inside one um, word list. Okay, now we have credentials, right? Let's return for the uh, website which we found at the beginning, and now hands on again. We try to access this, so I, we were able to open the zip file, open the text file, and voila, we were able to log on in eyes of network application. Eyes of network applications is one tool to be used inside the network to automate some process in terms of maintenance and so on, and also security scans. This, try, this product tried to do something. And by the way, I was connected as administrator on this, on this tool. And here we have the real version of that. So the comments that we saw inside the, uh, the Nmap comment, it was wrong, and now we have the real one. So we already have all the exploits for that, right? Because now we, and we have the version. So I just select the correct exploit to use. And one of these exploits basically uh, was telling me that I am able to abuse on one functionality of this tool because we have on one field here uh, uh, where we will, because this tool, this uh, eyes of network, 
you can use this to map your network. And it uses Nmap. And we have one field here where we supposed to type the IP range, correct? However, this IP range will be executed by Nmap. And Nmap, to do some stuff, it, it's common Nmap required root access or administrator access to deal with the kernel, to be able to manipulate the network, the, the, the network card and send more packages than the usual and so on. So yes, and the map sometimes could require root for some uh, flags. So it means that any map it's being executed in the background by this tool as root. So how, how I use that to escalate my privilege? I simple, instead of put only the, uh, the range, so I started my, this is my payload, right? So the ports, and I started to put more Linux command. You see, I just put semicolon, uh, echo, and then I started to create my own payload. This payload here, by the way, is my shell code, uh, is my uh, uh, command to lead this machine to connect on me. On left, I open this port 443, right? And put this unlisted in my attacker machine. Preparing this, I'm using netcat here, preparing this to receive this connection. In Linux, if you do that, like using slash dev slash TCP, and you put the IP address in the port, it will uh, connect. In this case, sorry, there's an error here because I use 80 port and in the slide it's 443. But you guys are understanding the, the idea. And then I insert this malicious command here and execute. And any map connect on me when the tool was running that. Any map was running as root. I receive the reverse shell on the left side here, step three. I receive the shell as root. So yes, this system is fully compromised. Because of what? One error in the web application. In the, in, the, in the product has one simple parameter that was executed by the operating system. It lent me to execute remote code execution in the operating system. And this guy's simple expose one version. Simple like that. Stuff that are common and nowadays is something very, very uh, common to do. One more case here, uh, a different target this time. So for automated, so we have a very simple uh, uh, web page, only two ports open, which was 20, 21 FTP and 80, right? Only two ports open. Um, and here we have the result of other automation. So to spidering, I'm using Go Spider to, to, to automate the process of crawling and so on, and have one map of everything, every single URL here that we have, uh, HTTP 200, uh, which re replied me with HTTP 200. So then you remember that once they fired, I will automate the scans. So this is the Burp Suite API result scan here. So all the findings and so on. And for my surprise, for some reason, Burp Suite was not able to find one command injection because we were gonna see that this parameter here is vulnerable for command execution. Uh, command injection, right? Uh, uh, so we, I am able to remote code execution on that. And what found this for me was Wapiti, right? He found me, hey, there is one code execution here. And here we have the parameter. The name of the parameter is Buscar. It's written in Portuguese. So the, this parameter is vulnerable. And here is the proof of concept. So I already have in my hand the vulnerability and the proof of concept. If I am a pen tester, just put this in the report, well done you finish your job. But I am a red team, so I needed to go there and exploit that, right? So very simple, and this is crazy, stupid stuff. And also we have other tools that also detect the same vulnerability for me, which is Arachne. Arachne is a really good tool, but unfortunately, the developer for this tool stopped to update this tool. But it's go very, very deep in the web application and good, really good analysis. So it also detected here, uh, uh, operating system command. It was able to execute operating system command on that. So two tools, identify that. Okay, so let's try that. Oh, simple like that. I just include some 
operating system comments and it was executed by the web application. This is the result for very poor PHP code, the, like PHP code that was not good enough. I mean, the guy don't even use a simple framework because this kind of stuff nowadays is stupid, right? You find that this kind of remote code execution nowadays is stupid because the majority of security frameworks are blocking that. So please review your code, run some remote uh, uh, code analysis in your code, even if it's a simple PHP application, but please do that. So here is the proof of concept that yes, I am able to execute comments in the operating system. So very stupid. So I was thinking, okay, maybe this machine will be tricky because in CTF, when you get inside the machine very easy, the exploitation to become root, because use it to be more difficult, right? So evaluating that, what I did, once again, let's prepare to receive our reverse shell. So here I put my, uh, my port and listening, right? And using uh, one moduli, I create one web server, right? I create one web server and I create a very simple um, PHP file, which is a, a reverse shell, right? A malicious PHP. If I be able to put this malicious PHP inside the server, I will uh, uh, be able to have access on that. Then I injected this command over here uh, using wget, right? And commanding the system to go for my server and download this file that I create. Right, this could be also be done. Okay, but I'm I'm having here Linux com uh, commands and Linux sent, but it can be easily done if you are running a Microsoft uh, server as well. It's kind of the same. So here's just the proof that the server came to me, downloaded this file. Right after this file is downloaded, I am uh, able to uh, execute uh, commands on that. So what I need to do simple prepare myself to receive this reverse shell reverse connection right so using netcat here and once again this is hands-on because this is exploitation so don't automate exploitation because it's very dangerous to, to try to automate that but this is a hands-on i prepare to re receive the reverse shell and just access this in the browser when i access this in the browser here you guys can see the results the server connect on me because my malicious php code was executed inside of that okay so uh, and okay, and inside of this, I found the first flag uh, of the CTF challenge. And okay, let's check what we have inside. A simple analysis on that, and I see that okay, we have a backup here. I try to hide the backup, put in one uh, uh, one dot before of the the file, so it is the way to hide files <laughs> inside the windows. And yes, we have on backup. I was evaluating this backup and voila, hard decoded credentials. So please don't hard decoded credentials, <laughs> even in a simple uh, website. And this is kind of the database code uh, uh, credentials, right? The database credentials. And now I have on my hand uh, one possible user, right? Which was this a few zero two and one password. What I did, I just check in slash ATC password to see if this is a valid user in the operating system. And yes, it was a valid user in the operating system. Um, and then I was checking, okay, let me see if I can use this credential, right? Because I am in the system, but I am not using this credential. Let me see if I'm able to uh, access this credential. And here, for my surprise, we have one port 22 open. But if you remember, any map show me only 21 and 80. It means what? We have a firewall. Yes, thanks for telling that. <laughs> yes, we have a firewall block in here, right? So we have a firewall. So let's see how to bypass this firewall, okay? But before that, I was testing this gradation where in the FTP because FTP is open. So let's try to access that. And yes, I was able to access the FTP with that credential. So, but I was not able to access the root directory because this guy doesn't have the root privilege for this, okay? And moving on, on this, this was the scenario, right? We have one SSH service running inside the machine, okay? The web server, what, which was the port 80, FTP server 21, and these are the, basically the fire rules, the representation of the fire rules that I have on that scenario. So basically incoming, we only have 80 and 21, 
And this file was also blocking the output. I was able to go only outside from this machine only for 443. Very common file rules. So a good file in general, because it was blocking only exposing the service they were expecting. Okay, so it means that I am not able to connect on that SSH. So they are safe, right? No, they are not safe. So chisel is one tool. I just put here so not become so boring. So I just put the the codes here, and I mean we will land this uh, slides for you guys later. So are four steps that we can bypass this file using chisel, right? So the the first step is send chisel. Chisel is on binary writing in GoLang, and I send this for this machine as the same way that I, I, I send my, my malicious PHP file, right? I just send this to inside the machine. Inside the machine, I execute chisel, right? On this uh, target machine. I execute chisel first on my machine, creating the server, and then I execute this in the target machine as client. So the result of this, just to speed up because I take too much time, will be this. So step step one, in the adversary machine, I run chisel as server, right? After send the chisel to the target machine, I command the uh, target machine to connect on me, on, on my port, in 443, right? Because it's the only rule that I can uh, access, it's 443 as output. In the target machine, it will open the port 9001. I Tell Chisel, hey, use this port as SOX, port, uh, as SOX 5 pro, uh, port proxy. And then I convert also the port that Chisel will open on my side in SOX proxy. So I will have one port, in this case, uh, 10, 000, 1080. Every single package I in, in send to this port, I will land in the op opposite side. So now I am able to access the SSH. How to force my network packets to go to inside? Proxy chains, right? We can use the proxy chains and say, hey, everything that I run using proxy chains, send the uh, network traffic to this port. Then I use proxy chains, SSH, right? Then the credentials that we got, because we already got, have these credentials, right? We found this, this inside the backup on port 22. All this traffic will be halted as described here, right? Using the 443. So one port that was using only for output, remember TCP protocol, it can receive and send data. So firewall are not protecting you. Okay, firewall is not protecting you. So then now we are able to access the credential as this guy. And this was a funny because this guy has permission to run Docker containers, very common for developers nowadays, right? Sometimes the company don't give you the root or the administrator on the machine, but they allow you, in this case, this was the scenario, they allow you uh, uh, run Docker containers and they will set up the operating system, granted the root privilege only for Docker process, right? So you as user, you don't have the administrator or root privilege, but the Docker has. In this case, it's not Docker because they are using LXD. Uh, it's uh, very similar to Docker, uh, but it's a more native uh, Linux uh, uh, virtualization. Five minutes, okay, I'm finished. Uh, and then, what I discovered, I can create one malicious uh, image, right? A simple uh, um, Docker image sent to this file because if you see here, I was listing the image and there is no image there. So, okay, this guy received the access, but it, he removed the Docker image that he has. So I create one very simple one using Alpine. Send these files, these two files to there, to this uh, uh, machine. And uh, I just using SCP to copy this using right the the, the bypass of the the, the file we, we have send this to the the server so here are the servers right the files inside the server 
and now I am able to run this machine. So I installed that uh, uh, in the local machine. So now I have a simple Alpine image on that. Until this moment, nothing is different in this. I just set up that this uh, uh, container will, will run as privilege, right? So when I run this container as privilege, I can mount the root slash uh, uh, this the root directory this, this slash directory inside the container and i i was able to access that so basically when i started this container mounting on this directory everything inside of that including the root directory remember we are not root but now we are as, having access to everything even this slash etc passwd we, we can crack this password and have access to that so a lot of this process uh, from automation, I have other samples here, but unfortunately, I take uh, more time than I was expecting uh, for that. So I will open for some uh, questions uh, for you guys, especially for who is uh, online and so on. And uh, I hope that this process, I mean, this speak about automation, uh, I mean, could help you guys to automate your own process, right? To, to do that. I just give some insights here that can be used and how these simple actions help me to, to do that. For um, how many how many minutes, Cassio? I'll just show you one, um, one report sample. Okay, I'm gonna be very quickly. Hold on a second, let me just... mm -hmm. So, the only part of this that I was missing was automation of reports. So, this is a very simple report uh, that I generated using one tool uh, called Serpico. So this is kind of the, the level of report that we have uh, from that. This is kind of the, the CTF flag uh, where I, I have there. So once I have, uh, so here my name, it's written in Portuguese, sorry, because it was a CTF for, for people uh, in, in, in Brazil. So this executive summary uh, part of that, all of these, you can automate the process to generate this report. Uh, the scope of the project by itself, all of this, because usually uh, this kind of text will not change too much, right? So you, you can uh, uh, kind of um, have this. Uh, the scope, what was the uh, IP address of so on? In this case, is a CTF uh, um, uh, stuff. One table with all the vulnerabilities, right? This is, could be automated by this tool. It's really useful when you need to do this time, this kind of job routinely and you needed to deliver that. The only part that is not automated here is this graphic. I created this graphic by myself before deliver the, the report. So this is executive summary. And then we go for the technical part uh, uh, of this report. All of these, you can basically create templates, right? And what really change in this report are the vulnerabilities by itself. So here we have the vulnerabilities, the critical, uh, the critical level, the description of the vulnerabilities and so on. And you remember the screenshots and everything that we got automatically. So then just put the screenshots here and so on. All the CVEs that was detected, automated by the scan, I just put this here. So the process of creation of the uh, report, it's much more fast and uh, uh, then uh, report everything again. So all this WFUS stuff you guys see, uh, before this is a different machine a different uh, uh, attack so and then all the process of exploitation how we were able to abuse on smb protocol and so on all of these screenshots everything like that was automated including the generation of reports so serpico is a really good uh, tool for automated um reports guys I hopefully that this uh, message could explain you how this process are automated nowadays and why i'm telling that 
ransomware groups are doing this to get inside companies, hack everything, compromise everything, and the majority of the time is automated, right? I am not a developer, and I was able to automate at this level, right? So if I have the experience that you guys has automating, right, and, and apply this malicious knowledge to create something like that, yes, you you guys has the probability to create something much better than this, right? So I hope you guys enjoy. It's really good to see face after a long time. And uh, here are my contacts on LinkedIn content and so on. I'm not very active on, on social media, but I will try to, to answer and answer the guys. I really appreciate the opportunity, Cassio, the organizer and so on. So, and we're still in touch in the event, okay? Thank you very much.